Welcome to Arise Life, a community of believers being equipped, empowered, and released into their destiny. For more information, go to arisealife.org or follow us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Well, if you were with us last week, you know we've been talking about this whole thing of saying yes to the call of God, the dreams that he's placed in our heart, and the courage to step out, particularly in this new year. And we're looking at the story of Gideon. If you guys remember, we started out this whole thing. It said that, that Israel turned away from God, and he turned them over to the Midianites. To, they were the, these raiders who would come in and take everything from them for seven years. Now, here's the deal. If you leave protection, so a lot of times people read that and see God doing something actively to Israel. Who left God? Israel. Where is the protection of God? Over by him, right? If I leave, okay, if I have an umbrella and I'm standing under it and I don't get wet, if I leave the umbrella, I get wet. Is it the umbrella's fault? I have bad news for y'all. I cannot tell you the number of times I blame God, and it's taken me years to realize. <laughs> God's like, I was not involved in that. That was actually the issue. I was never invited to the issue, right? And so here they are for seven years. Finally, after seven years, they call out, who are my people? It only takes a little while, a few years, to come to your senses. And they're like, ah, why have you abandoned me? He's like, I didn't abandon you. If we see this, when, the people, when Adam and Eve turn away from God, God follows them out of the garden. That's why he says, turn to me. Why? Because he's right behind us the whole way. Like, he's like, I'm here for you. I'm here. Do you, you don't want to do it alone? I'm right here. I've never left you or forsaken you, even when you did, because I cannot deny myself, he says. And so here they are, and, and then, and so they cry out, and so God sends a mighty angel to a mighty warrior by the name of a Gideon, a.k.a. Bad Farmer, and uh, who is, and he's like, and who doesn't receive the word of the Lord and says, no, where are your mighty deeds? I don't believe you. If you really were for us, where have you been? Blah, 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 blah. Who are my people? Okay. God's a big boy. He can handle it. Can you handle the smackdown that follows? I'm telling you. Some of us, we go, meh, 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 turn off the channel. And God's like, I was just getting started. God can handle your questions. Can you handle his? So here we go. So has it stay, stay in the conversation. So he stays in the conversation. And eventually, he, God says, no, you're my mighty warrior. Go in the strength you have. He says, how is that possible? He said, because I am with you. Let me tell you, if I've got one penny and I've got Warren Buffett's debit card, I'm all right. Because my one penny is of no value. My strength is meaningless. His might is everything. He is more than enough. What he accomplished on the cross is more than enough for every situation. So here I am. I'm sitting, we're with him and we're watching Gideon. And Gideon finally says, okay, if this is really you, uh, prove it. But he, let me tell you, who, are, who here has tried to fit, test God? Okay, I'm going to challenge you. God really challenged me on this. You're allowed to test God as long as it costs you something. You can't test God like, God, if this is you, I want to say, hmm, let me see. Right? You know what I'm talking about? Who are my people? Somebody's just going to randomly call me or whatever. We stand over here. It costs me nothing. If it's really you, prove it. But what does he do? He says, if it's really you, and he makes this incredibly, they're in the middle of a famine, and he sacrifices an entire goat and 36 pounds of flour of a Do you really want to know whether it's God or not? It's going to cost us. And so anyway, so he says yes to God. And so, and so he has this radical encounter with God, right? Who are my people? You, want it, you will do what he says if you have a radical encounter with him. People are like, I'm not signing up. I don't want to, I don't want to put my hand up because he'll hit me. He'll get me. No. So he has this radical encounter. But here's the deal. Does he walk out the call of God on his life in a radical encounter? No. Because it says later that night, God says to him, he had a physical angel. Now he just has the interior voice of God mm. saying, 
Well, listen, were you serious? You, you going to man up? You going to be my mighty warrior? Yeah. He said, okay, start with your own house. Start with your own mess. Start with your own altar that ha- you've been worshiping the wrong things on. No, no, I don't want to start with your altar. I, no, who are my people? You're like, I listen, listen, I'll be able to follow you when my neighbor, my husband, my child, blah, blah, blah. No? And God's like, how about yo altar? But he does it. He tears it down. Again, at great cost, because God says, I want you to kill the second most valuable oxen in, the, in, in your father's herd which, by the way, was his inheritance. He was taking his IRA out and shooting it in the head. God, whoa, whoa, whoa. See, and when he does, oh my goodness, it looks like everybody's going to turn on him and they have this moment where the people come out and say, who did this? And his father, who he, he doesn't know whether his father's going to turn on him or not. By the way, you don't know who's for you till you step out. Anyway, moving on. And, uh, and so here he goes, and, and his dad goes, listen, Baal could have stopped him destroying this, this altar because Baal was the god of lightning. He could have zapped him. He said, but he didn't. He said, if, if Baal has a problem with it, let Baal deal with him. And they named him, let Baal deal with him, which also means he's the guy who takes on Baal. Or as Masha said, a Baal buster. Right? I mean, he is, he's, he is, he's there, man. He's like, whoa, listen, it's incredible. So here's this moment. You're like, right? But what is the call of God's on Gideon to deliver all of Israel? So coming off of that, we have this amazing moment. So if you got, we're just going to do about six or seven verses today. So if you got a Bible's Judges chapter six. So, so what has happened? He has just done this mighty, incredible act, verse, uh, verse 32. And they say, woo, you're partying. And the very next thing that happens as a result of him doing this wonderful thing, let's see what God does for him. Now, all the Midianites, Amalekites, and other Eastern peoples join forces. Okay, up to this point, we've just been dealing with a few. So it's like he brings them all crossed over the Jordan and camped in the Valley of Jezreel, which is the richest area of that, that portion of the country. Okay, wait a minute. Anybody see a problem? I just obeyed you, God. I risked my neck. What? Okay. Who are, okay, if you risk and you are sacrificial and you obey God, what do you think will be the next thing that happens? Blessing, reward, what? Opposition. No, you're on it. You're on it. But I, I ha- okay, I just do this. I live in this fantasy world where at some point I get to coast. Anybody? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so that's called heaven. <laughs> that's called heaven. That's not this life. In this life, he says, you will have trouble. I've never seen somebody with that as a tattoo for some reason. <laughs> this is the promise of the Lord over my life. <laughs> no, in this life, listen, listen. The, all these Amalekites, they all, so first of all, there were, Joshua had the same problem. If you guys remember, Joshua attacked Jericho. They destroyed it. Then attacked another, attacked another. They conquered six cities. woo So, but they were the weak cities. And then it said all the northern cities, which were the rich, powerful cities who had massive armies and the equivalent of M1 tanks for their little sticks and ponies, all gathered together. And Joshua went, God, anybody? That's a perfectly legitimate prayer, by the way. Just make sure when he picks up the phone, you listen. So anyway, and God says, don't worry. And the equivalent is God brought, God said, you could chase One city after another, but I brought all the armies together so you could whip them all at one time. (laughs) Could it be the massive opposition you face is to speed up your process? Could it be God brought all of the or enemies in one place so he's like, so we can deal with business? (laughs) But what do we think when that happens? I mean, not you, but what does your neighbor think? 
God is not with me. Panic. Panic. I, didn't hear it right. I didn't hear it right. He's punishing me. He's punishing me. You it. I, we deserve it. Whew. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to nail you. Are, okay, I'm going to tell you. We're going to talk in a minute about what this season 2024 is about. But let me tell you this. You won't make it out alive. If you do not learn to hold the standard of the fruit of the spirit over your own thought life. If the thoughts inside your head do not bear love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, then they don't come from God, even if they're true. Is it true that all of the enemies of Israel came together in a way they'd never come? Was it true that it was potentially the worst day ever in the history of Israel? Yes. But is that what God is saying? I cannot afford to have a thought inside my head that doesn't originate in the thought of the mind of God. Amen. And I'm going to tell you, many of us have been praying for massive breakthrough and massive opposition is coming because God wants to take down the very things that have tormented us our whole life. Yeah. But it's going to cause opposition. But let me tell you, the opposition threatens massively, but God delivers even more so. But we will not see the deliverance of the Lord if we run. So what did Gideon do? I love Gideon. Gideon is my boy. I just feel so encouraged by watching Gideon, this great man of faith. <laughs> and he said, his response is, then the spirit of the Lord came on Gideon. I love it. This verse word means the spirit of the Lord put on Gideon like a glove. Anybody had that, that kind of experience where God just goes, Wah! and the spirit of crazy comes on you. are like, oh my gosh. And I believe God completely. I have a gift of faith. I will do whatever you say, Lord. Yes, Lord. Sign here. Thank you. And as soon as you sign, you're like, ah! No? Anybody? Okay. So I submit, for me, that is, I sign blank checks in the past. He cashes them, and I'm like, what? Anyway, but moving on. So he says, then the Spirit of the Lord came on Gideon, and he blew a trumpet, summoning the Abirazites, that's his family, to follow him. And he sent messengers throughout Manasseh, Asher, Zebulun, Naphtali. These are all the areas of Israel that are under attack. Now, what do they do? Let me ask you a question. In the past, every single time the enemy came in, what have the people of Manasseh, Asher, Naphtali, and Zebulun done? They hid in the ground. They dug holes in the ground and hid. Now, God has allies for you in your fight. And they're people who hide in holes. Am I impressed with people who hide in holes? Do I want to cherry pick my allies? Okay. Do you want to cherry pick your allies? I don't want people who hide in holes. Like, give me some good ones, Lord. God's like, all I got is people who hide in holes. I don't have anything else. <laughs> have you seen the people who follow Jesus? They're fishermen. Yeah. Right? Like, if you're looking for the classy ones, guess what? They don't come. The people who hide in holes come. Because they're hungry and they're sick and tired of hiding in holes. And they hear the word of the Lord on his, in his message. And he says, so that they too went up to meet them. Meet who? They ran toward the enemy. For the first time in seven years, they ran toward the enemy. Because the same spirit of God that came on Gideon came on them. How do I know? Because they did something different than they'd ever done in seven years. They did a 180 degree difference. Gideon said to God, Thank you, Lord, that you've heard my cry. We will now go forth and do mighty deeds. Oh, you don't have that in here? Yeah. Gideon said, if you will say, wait, wait, wait a minute. He's the one who called this army together. <laughs> why, why, why do you think he's having a problem? Doubting himself. What, doubting himself? What do you think? Way out of his depth. Out of his depth? <laughs> he sees reality with his eyes. Now, okay, not you, but for me, in my Gideon moments, when I've had good moments, you know, like tore down the altar of Baal. You know, I suddenly make this tiny little error. You don't, but I do. This tiny little error that I think it was my might that did it. That it was my awesomeness. 
So God, by his grace, will lead me to the places where I ain't got enough delusional awesomeness. <laughs> and, and he's looking, he's going, I got, I got one altar of Baal level of awesomeness. Huge mighty army. Ah! Let me tell you, if you're following God, he will constantly lead you to a place you cannot go. If you're in a place where you can go, you aren't in the place God calls you. If you're in a place where you can do it, you're not where God has you. If you will save Israel by my hand, as you have promised, look, I will place a wool fleece on the threshing floor. You guys remember, where was he at the beginning of this? He was in a wine vat threshing grain, hiding in a hole, being a bad farmer. Where is he now? You know what a threshing floor is? Threshing floor was a high place on a hill wide open to the wind where you could throw the wheat in the air and the wind would blow away the chaff. In other words, he's standing in a wide open exposed place. He started in a wine vat. Now he's on a threshing floor. Don't despise the day of small beginnings. He's moving. Listen, we have to learn to celebrate the victories of God, but recognize they're his victories in us, not ours. If you will say, by my look, I will place a wool fleece on the threshing floor. If there is dew only on the, on the, on the fleece, then all the ground is dry. Then I'll know that you will save Israel by my hand, as you said. Okay, what in the world is he doing? He's testing God. He's testing God. Now, I would submit to you, it's an extremely expensive test because he already blew the horn. Do you know what I'm saying? He's not, we we want to test God before we go. He's testing God after he went. It's If you test him from a place of safety where it costs you nothing, more than likely you'll never move. But when you test him from a place of abandonment, it's a different story. Gideon, so he, he's laid out. He said, if the, uh, the fleece is completely soaked by the dew and the ground is dry, then I'll know that you've saved Israel by my hand. Now, here's the other thing. He's on a threshing floor, remember? It's on the top of a hill. If you know anything about atmospheric things, when wind blows, it blows away the dew. It dries things out. So he's, he's really setting God up. And that is exactly what happened. Gideon rose early the next day and he squeezed the fleece and wrung out the dew, a whole bowl full of water. I just see the angels just walking up there, just dumping, just dumping water. He's like, we're going to make it. Anybody here, you've asked God for a sign and the sign came and you went. <laughs> I mean, it's just a bowl full. I like Gideon. He gives me hope. <laughs> then Gideon said, don't be angry. <laughs> Have mercy. Oh, and he does. He's so gracious to walk with us feeble people. He says, don't be angry, but let me make one more request. Why is he asking this? Because he knows what he's about to do is a full sacrifice of himself. If I'm going to give myself with no self-protection, Jesus said, unless, if he who attempts to seek his life will lose it, if I'm going to literally not protect my life and I'm going to go all in God, I need to know you got me. Notice he's not asking for God to show up with a mighty army of angels. That's what I would have done. Who are my people? Like, God, if I could just have like a few M1 tanks, I'd be good. Right? No, no. So he's testing God not to get God to do what he wants. He's not trying to manipulate God to do the, deal with the situation the way he wants it. He's wanting to test God so he can trust God. Let it, just one more request, allow me to make one more test, just to make sure it wasn't some weird atmospheric condition. He said, this time make the fleece dry and the ground around it wet. And that night, God did so. Only the fleece was dry and the ground was covered with dew. Mm. 
we are headed into a year that's going to change fundamentally everything. And it's going to start with our own altars. But it's going to lead to us walking as a mighty army. On January 1st, uh, Masha reminded me that every year we sit down and we ask God what he wants us to know about the year, and then we come back together. And uh, I said, okay. And she went away, and I was like, oh, I have to do this. <laughs> I, I'm going to be honest. I didn't have a, a massive amount of faith. But I said, okay, God, what do you want me to know? And God, I, I, I'm, okay, I'm just going to get real with you for a minute. I have not been asking God for big words in a while because of disappointment. Yeah. Who are my people? Because I, I have disappointment with people who've spoken as prophets, people who, things I've heard that haven't come to pass, so on and so forth. Just being honest. And when I'm disappointed, I quit listening. And I say, God, I'll be honest, I'm disappointed. And he said, well, there's a reason why you're disappointed. I've given you big words and you've done one of two things. You've either tried to do them in your own strength or you sat back and waited for them to happen on their own. Who are my people? Okay. He said, but I lead you in baby steps into the fullness of what God promises. Okay. All right, Lord, your servant is listening. Bam. I just got about hit upside the head so fast. I was like, I was like, he's like, Call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and mighty things that you did not know. But listen, don't ask to hear if you're not going to obey. So what he spoke to me, he spoke me four words. He spoke four words to me. He said, fire, rain, flood. harvest as I leaned in I really felt he was saying that these are four month seasons for I'm not saying this for the world for three month seasons sorry three month seasons I'm not saying for the world I'm saying for me but I believe also for our body and I said, Lord, I don't understand. You ever heard something really clear, but you have no clue? That's usually a sign you're listening to God. I don't understand, Lord, speak. And he began to speak. He said, fire. He said, these next three months are a time of, can we pull up that, the next one? Sifting, refining, building, planting, strengthening, and purifying. If we are to go where God wants us to go, individually and as a body, it will cost us everything. We don't get the luxury. Gideon lost the option to live a normal life. If I want what God has, I can't do it halfway. It's all or nothing. Who are my people? You're like, Lord, you can have it all, all but 10%. I keep this for my own. <laughs> yeah. Can we get some, uh, some Hammond B3 on that? That'd be great. <laughs> But no, seriously, like, if, listen, if you want his all, he must have all. Right. Don't play with him. He don't play. He don't play. Sift, refine, prepare, build, plant, pure, strengthen, purify. And that leads me to a point of saying, God, what do you want to refine in me? What do you want to sift and what do you do? But I just felt like he said it's a deep, you know, pre preparation period. But that led me to the next one, the next three, April through June. And he said it's a time of the beginning of rains. One of a, I, anybody love that, that moment where Elijah is crying out for rain to end the drought? And they look, nothing, look, nothing, look, nothing. Finally, I see a cloud the size of a man's hand. And he says, run. Rain is coming. Listen, rain, how do, rain can 
A healthy rain for your land, if you're a farmer, you know this, is a healthy rain begins very gentle so that the grain, can, the ground can receive it. But we don't despise the day of small beginnings. As we get, begin to see answered prayers, as we begin to see hope fulfilled, we, we find ourselves surprised by joy, peace. We find that God is beginning to move. We celebrate the small beginning. Seven months ago, I, God put on my heart the fact that I didn't know my neighbors and my neighbors didn't know me and I didn't know if they knew God. And who are my people? My house is my castle. God, I, I don't want them to know me. God's like, good luck with that. He said, if you want my kingdom, you have it on my terms. So I said, God, I, I ask you for opportunities. And I began to pray, look for opportunities to connect with my neighbors, to know them as people, to love them, to, that he would give me his love for them. Little bit by little bit by little bit. And then last night, we were invited to a graduation party, and like all of my, our neighbors were there. And I was able to connect with them. And I was like, God, you did it. I prayed this weak and feeble prayer. Forgot it, reprayed it, looked for opportunity, tried to fumble about, and yet you brought the increase. I'm going to celebrate the beginning of rain. When we, God gave us this house we're in, one of the things he said, he said, I'm looking for a house for y'all that 100 people can gather in. And they can. It can be tight. We've had up to 60 at a time. But he, I really felt like he said, if the gospel is not good for your neighbors, then it's not good for everybody else. I'm going to celebrate answered prayer. I'm going to celebrate it because it's the first drop that promises the whole of the promise of God. Who? Okay. Who here? You have a long list of what God hasn't done. Do you have a list of what he's done? Let me tell you this. If you study this list rather than this list, you will find yourself defeated, despairing, and unable to partner with God. But if you will celebrate what he's done, rather, then you can turn to what hasn't done and go, Oh, you mighty mountain, you will become nothing. Amen. Right? Because I will be encouraged. But the, the third season of this, what I believe I thought is, is flood. And I said, what is that about? Let me tell you. The Lord reminded me. We have a friend of this house who's coming here July 10th through 14th, Robbie Dawkins. Let me tell you, we've got six months to prepare. Prepare our hearts, prepare our hearts. Because what is coming is going to be massive, but it's going to cost us. For those of you guys who were with us in 2020 in the middle of COVID when we did a conference, it was challenging, wasn't it? Yeah. Let me tell you, it's going to 11. This is going to be an amazing school that he is going to be doing, that school that he does in the Middle East, Afghanistan, Iraq, Iran, Jordan, he does training believers to reach the lost. Mm -hmm. But also one of the graces he has is to go straight against fear. Mm -hmm. If you have fear in your life or you have a heart to reach the lost, you want to be a part of this. It's going to be available definitely for youth. I'm going to be talking with them that it can also be available for kids because we want to see this go. Absolutely. We w Jesus died. And he said, and he came back, and he resurrected, and he was about to leave, and he left us one command. Do you guys know what it was? Go into all the world and preach the gospel, to making disciples of all men. 99% of what I spend my life on is not that. Can I be honest? That's why he tarries. That's why he waits. Whew. Jesus. <laughs> I tried to go easy. I, okay. Okay. <laughs> So, I feel like we have gotten really amazing in this season and in this movement of figuring out our personal dreams and our personal visions, and everyone is kind of has their own dream and vision. But I want to say that Jesus also has a vision, <laughs> and Jesus has a dream, right? And it's to come and seek the lost so that everyone can come in and become part of his family. 
And I just want to say that I feel like he's inviting all of us into his vision. All of us into his vision. For the sake of the harvest, right, that is here. It's white in the, in the, in the harvest fields. But do you know that I feel like he's been saying to me that, you know, it could happen parallel. You could continue doing your thing and never step in and never be a part. And the greatest thing in history will happen parallel to you, but you will not step in. And I have felt like he's been telling me last year, the whole year, he's like, it's not too late. It's not too late to prepare, but it's time yeah. to prepare. Yeah. The time is limited, but we have time. <laughs> That's the good news. Because, you know, Jesus told us that if, if I'm a disciple, I will make disciples. Yeah. Who has had that experience in your life? Where you... Where you are... It's like normal, like you're so comfortable with leading someone to the Lord and then discipling them and bringing them into community. If like you are a pro at that, like, and you've led like multiple people like that and they're walking with Jesus and walking with you in community, yeah. right? I'm like, wow, we have room to grow. <laughs> <laughs> we have room to grow, right? We're equip and power and release for the harvest, Right? Not just for me to be awesome. Not just for me to walk in my dreams, although that's going to happen, right? As a, as a benefit, as a side effect of walking in Jesus' dream. But we have ways to go. I feel like I, I have this um, picture, and I have to be gentle with how I share it. Because <laughs> Peter has told me I scare people. <laughs> okay, y'all. <laughs> Anybody need helmets? <laughs> But, okay, so this is the picture he gave me for us and just for the body of Christ. I feel like we are like people who have bought season passes to, like, do we have some dog fans or Braves fans? Wave at me. Like let's, go you, with, let's go with football. Football, okay. Atlanta Falcons. No, nothing about it. Falcons. Okay. If I, can, if I get confused, you'll correct me. <laughs> All right. So we have the season passes. What does it mean if you have a season pass? You just go, you know, you come on a Sunday, you sit and you cheer. You wear t uh, jerseys. You wear jerseys, right? What else do you do as a fan? Eat really healthy food. <laughs> <laughs> like if you can't make it there in person, you watch it on TV, right? So that's, that's what it means having a season pass. And I felt like Jesus is saying, I'm inviting everyone to be on the team. On the, on the field. So, Kristen, you invited to be one of the Falcons, right? <laughs> what is your response right now? <laughs> okay, well, that's one on. response. <laughs> um, Scott, you're about to get on the field. What's your response? Let's have let's fun. Have, okay, okay, y'all okay, okay, look like... Okay, let's be let's, real. Yeah, let me tell you this. If I am lining up opposite a 350-pound monster, I'm going to go see Jesus. Because he's sending me. I would no, be like, Jesus! Okay, it's, I, you would be like me trying to play soccer in college, okay? <laughs> you all, I'm so not athletic. I still don't know the rules necessarily for soccer. But somehow a group of us blondes has decided that we can go and be intermu intermural, intermural team. Intermural team. <laughs> <laughs> well, wait, guess what happened to us? We didn't know, like, we didn't run. We didn't know the rules necessarily. <laughs> we were not trained. It was very painful. I think it was like 20 minutes in, it was 12 to nothing. And I had like a cramp. <laughs> right? Like, I was like, we're just gonna have fun. Uh... <laughs> okay, I should have found 
find out the rules. <laughs> okay? So, again, my award. You are invited to be on the team. We have a time. Okay, who's done athletic like stuff? How many times a week do you train? Woo! <clears throat> and sometimes you have scrimmages, right? What does it mean for the rest of your lifestyle if you're on a team? Can you eat anything you want? Can you just skip practices and go do whatever you want? No, it limits, right? So I feel like when Jesus is saying that he's inviting everyone to, do, to be on the field, it's going to cost us things, right? It's going to be like, wow, I'm going to have to do push-ups <laughs> and run a little circle, <laughs> right? Like, if I'm cool to be in the game and I never got off my couch, like, it's going to be really tricky. I'm probably going to die, <laughs> right? <laughs> but I feel like there is time. There is good news, right? Whew. So I feel like this invitation, I feel like there could be shame and be like, oh my gosh, I have not run a mile. I could barely walk around my subdivision, right? I have never shared my faith with anyone. I have never, you know, like even said hi or boo. <laughs> or it could be an invitation, like let's start training. And... I am with you, like, I would rather just sit on my couch and watch Netflix, right? Mm -hmm. And Jesus has been like, I feel like we've been like forerunners in it, but we've been forerunners in it, not just to be like, wow, we're the only ones who will ever do this, but like to show the way. Like Jesus said, if you don't go, if you don't lead the way, like, who else is going to do it? <laughs> like, you are the leaders. <laughs> you have to get out and experience that stuff first so that others can follow and see that they're not going to die. <laughs> like, they're going to be okay. So we started about a year ago. We started opening our home to people, just saying, you know, just young adults and all of that. And it's been amazing to see, right? Like, there's a couple of people here. Like, Ajali, you've brought, like, your whole workplace, right, to our house. <laughs> they all come in. They're hungry. They're amazing. The harvest is, is white. It's ready. Let's get ready. Come on. Come on. Let's get ready. I feel like this is the, the year for it. Last year when, or last year, 2020, when Robbie Dawkins was here, I asked him a hard question. Because one thing I realized that we like to do in the church <clears throat> is we divide up into two teams. You guys ready? We take the harvest and we divide it into two parts. We divide the harvest into evangelism, and discipleship. And we all say which team we're on. It's about to get uncomfortable, by the way. We all want to say which team we're on. Most people end up on this, like talking to people I don't know. I don't want to, right? But also very theoretically. Very right? theoretically, yeah. Like, like I'm, I have the hugs ministry. <laughs> I yeah. do. Right? No, no, but... but the other side is with, I, I run into this with evangelists all the time. They're like, I love leading people to Jesus. And they drive by the church and throw the fish onto the doorstep and drive off. If, if, if that. If, Let me <laughs> tell you, usually Jesus even didn't have... say reach the lost. Jesus didn't say preach the gospel. He said what? He said, make them disciples. Mm -hmm. And I asked about Robbie Dawkins. I said, I said, you see people saved all the time. I said, What? Is the, what have you seen that actually makes them followers, disciples of Jesus? And he looked at me for a minute and he went, the only thing I've ever seen is if within 24 hours they're invited into someone's home for dinner. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't want to have a leading to the Lord. I just don't want him in my life. <laughs> Guys, let me tell you this. We have abdicated reaching the lost to the people at the front. I'll bring them to church. You save them, Lord. Save them, Pastor. No, it doesn't. No, that's why Billy Graham preached, saw tw preached to, saw 200 million decisions for Christ. Do you know how many of those actually were in any way changed after, after one year? 12 million. And that's just like the lowest level, like a little bit of change. 
Like they might not be changed, but they're going to church. Guys, do you know what transforms is life on life? So l- let me show, show you another thing. Is everyone's like, the harvest, it's so big. Have you guys ever seen this? If one person reaches one person for the Lord, disciples them, does life with them for six months, and then at the end of six months, each of them leads somebody to the Lord, do you know how long it would take to reach the entire world? 13 years. 13 years. Jesus has been gone 2,000. 13 years. We make the gospel, we make the harvest huge. God says, go get you one. Go get you one. Go get you one. Live life with them. Live life. Open your heart. Walk with them. Let them listen. A lot of times we think discipleship is indoctrinating them. It's not. They don't need all the answers. Who here, you've got spiritual answers for problems you don't have? (laughs) Right? You've read books about stuff you don't even struggle with. Each one of us is dealing with an issue and we need somebody who will walk with us and invite Jesus into that one issue and walk with us. I want to say again, it will cost us everything. But I want you to know it's worth it. This is why we were made. Listen, some of you all have calling to business. It's not business for business sake. It's business for the sake of the gospel. And it's not just to bring money into the kingdom. It's to reach the lost. As an avenue, there, some of us are called to various things. Some of you say, well, I, I'm stuck at home with my kids. Guess what? I discovered I have neighbors. And I have people who cut my hair. Some of you know those stories. I Listen, you and I, none of us, we are all called to enter into his joy because that's what the power of God comes behind. So I just want to address something else. The only... Um place where gift of evangelist is mentioned, right, is where he talks about the gifts to the church, right, in Ephesians, apostles, prophets, prophets, teachers, evangelists, who am I forgetting? Pastors. Pastors. It's a gift to the church, right? So Robbie Dawkins is an evangelist that's a gift to our church. Training To train the saints. (laughs) Not to do it, but to train us. Okay. Can I just give money so he'll do it? I would like to. Yeah. <laughs> it would be easier. No, no. The reality is each of us, each of us have a place in the harvest. And I would submit a lot of us are waiting to be go when we've got it sorted out and we'll never go because we'll never sort it out because we'll sort it out as we go. If you looked at the disciples, they were not all that. But when we begin to walk with people, and, we, and I want to say this, we walk with one, but we invite them into the larger community because we're not the one-stop answer for them either, are we? Okay, so we've gotten all up in your face. Um, I want to come back to what Gideon said. See, God has given you promises in 2024. I just want to submit they won't happen in a vacuum. They won't happen by yourself. They won't happen if you pursue it for you. But if you step into what God is doing, you will find he'll bring you into those things. With community, right? I feel like that's also, we're not going just out of, from our, for our own individual things, right? We're going together. We're going as a body. Community on mission, Right? Community, deep community. I feel like that's what Jesus has been doing in our midst. He's been building those deep relationships, deep community. But it's not community for community's sake. Okay? It's community to bring the kingdom of heaven to earth. It's to make disciples. It's to be ambassadors. It's to make a three-dimensional space where people can step in and experience the kingdom. Right? I think, guys, you've had so many stories of the man's meetings when a guy comes in from completely outside and is weeping by the end of the night because he's experienced the love of God. He's experienced the kingdom of heaven, right? This is what we're about. This is what we're building. We're building tight community on mission. (laughs) On mission. We are on mission. We're not just the YMCA, (laughs) Building community for community's sake, right? Or I, I don't know what their thing is, but not, yeah. not just... Sing kumbaya. <laughs> we are on a mission. We are going together. And I, we are inviting 
all of us who want to be trained this year. Because I, I feel like I've just stepped into it and I'm like, oh my gosh, I need so much more equipment, so much more equipping and training because this is out of my depth. Like when I go and, and talk with the KSU students, it's out of my depth. Like their ways and concepts yeah. are out of my depth. I need more training. I need more experience. I need to run several loops for many, many weeks to get good at something, Come on. right? Well, and so to that end, as I said, in July, we're going to be having Robbie Dawkins here. And one of the things I realized, that's kind of like uh, knowing you have a game coming up. I'm like, oh! Now, it's not going to be too late to get in there when that comes, but you will have a fundamentally different experience if you have been allowing God to change you, if you've been allowing him to sift, allowing him to prepare. If you've been get... One of the things that has helped me the most, though, let me just give you this. It's a baby step. I, we were listening, we, we, out of our hunger for this, about seven or eight months ago, we allowed ourselves to be mentored by a Swiss couple that ministers in Thailand and uh, who've reached the lost in incredible ways. And he said something that his life was transformed. He was going out trying to evangelize. Ah, it, was, it was horrible. It was hard. It was ugly. It wasn't pretty. And, and it wasn't good. And he said, I began to pray, God, give me your heart of love for them. And when he, what happened is he just kept praying that for a few, like, like a, a couple months. And all of a sudden, the heart of God's heart of love came upon him. See, if we're just doing evangelism for evangelism's sake, it will be creepy. We make people objects. But if we are compelled by the love of God... Guess what? We'll run into a burning building. If we're compelled by the love of God, we'll lay down our pride. If we're compelled by the love of God, we will say, I don't care what it looks like. I love. And one of the things I began to pray for is I'll be like, God, I need your heart of love. And as I did that, my heart was transformed from this self-protective shell to daring to actually want to know my neighbors. Well, and just with people in general, I feel like we have been shifting in our minds and hearts. And I feel like, you know, just as a lot of times Jesus would do something in us first and then it will, um, we'll, we are able to lead that way. But I feel like as our minds have been shifting just with, uh, in, closer into his heart and his purposes and his vision for this season for the earth, I feel like each one of us is invited to start shifting in our minds and shifting in our hearts and shifting in our priorities in this coming season so that we're aligned with where he is going, with what he is doing. Come on. If I could, we could pull up the last 2024 one with all the words. So with that, um, so after Robbie Dawkins, I really believe flood begins. It's a little late to build an ark when the floods begin. I believe because we're not, we're not seeking just to reach the lost. We're looking to bring them in. And one of the things we've been pressing into is ways of bringing in the discipleship, mm -hmm. like bringing people into homes. Uh, yeah, we've, we've been working on with these groups around the commands of Christ. And, uh, um, but we, are, we believe they're incoming, un incoming tide. But even so, we really feel like it's the final quarter of the year is harvest time. Is harvest time. And so we're believing God to do mighty, mighty, mighty things in this season and rescue many from the fire. Because we believe this is going to be a year of much shaking. Everything that can be shaken will be shaken, but that which is fixed on him will stand. And many people, many of us even, who have been trusting in things other than him, they'll be shaken. But our heart is that they would find themselves anchored in the rock. And so the final thing is we're going to be having our, our prayer, our ministry team training because we're rebooting that because, again, our heart is to be ready for the harvest. Our heart is to be ready for what God wants to do. And so if you would like to join that, whether you've been part of a team or not, please join us for that afterwards. But if we can have the worship team come. I just really believe he's calling us to a time of consecration. I feel like many of us 
leading into 2024, we may have accidentally signed blank checks to Jesus, saying, I want things to be different. I want, a, I wa I, I want the call you have on me, but we didn't understand the cost. Jesus said, you, he talked about counting the cost. Are we willing to go where he's calling us? Because it's going to cost us. Yes, we can test him, but it's going to cost us. So we can stand. Father, uh, we ask you right now, show us the joy set before us that is worth the cost, but also show us the cost that we would have the courage to belly up to the bar and say, Lord, have your way in me. Not my will, but yours be done. In your beautiful name. You know, right now, when we begin to pray, when we begin to sing, many of you begin to experience massive pain in your body. Some of you spent, began to feel mental torment like you haven't in a while. And the reason is because you have been toying with the idea of full surrender. And listen, <laughs> we all have areas where we're like, yeah, I'll keep this little area for myself. And those are the areas where the enemy takes up residence. Let me tell you, the enemy does not want you to be fully sold out for him, for Jesus. What I want to tell you, though, in the mountains, if you go up into the mountains, you'll cross a line. It's called the snake line. If you go above this line, snakes can't follow. They die. And I would submit to you, full surrender is the snake line. If you want to be free of what has got you bound right now, whether it's pain, whether it's mental torment, you want to be free. If you're feeling like it's getting aggravated, I want you to come up now. Get free today. Come up now. Don't wait. Don't wait. I can feel it. Listen, guys, there's some of you, you had massive spasms in your back. Start during this message, during this song. Some of you began to experience shooting pain in your head. Do you want to keep it or do you want to be free? Listen, that's just your enemy, the enemy being tormented by the presence of Jesus. Come up now. Don't wait. Don't sit back. This is now. Listen, his peace and power is above the snake line. Come up. Come up. Come up. She I also feel like um, just this whole full surrender thing, if that's been just uh, burning in your heart, but like the part of you is just like, no, Jesus, I just want to hold back. I don't want to go where you're leading me. I don't want to fully surrender. I don't want to sign that blank check. And it's just literally like, like what Peter said, it came on like a cloud and it's just fear is just gripped. Come up right now. Come up right now. If fear, if you just have a fight in your mind right now, just in Jesus name, in Jesus' name, we just command everything that's tormenting your people, Jesus, just to lift right now, to get out of them right now. Everything that's holding them back, spirit of infirmity out in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, if you are just crying out to Jesus saying, I don't know what it looks like, but I'm willing to go. I feel like it's Isaiah moment, Isaiah moment. Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? And if you are like Jesus, You'll have to change me and transform me and train me, but I'm willing. You have me. You have me. This altar is open. Just come and drag yourself to the altar if need be. <laughs> man, I can feel it, man. I don't normally feel this, but I can feel it. Some of you are toying with this. You're trying to see how long you can hold out. Don't find out. Don't find out. Guys, this is your hour. This is your hour. This is the hour of your breakthrough. Listen, if you want what Jesus has, it will cost you everything, but it's worth it. 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 Oh, listen, is your dignity worth it? No. Oh, Jesus, you are worth it. There are people who have a massive call on your life, but you've been saying, no, Jesus, I don't, I'm scared or I'm disqualified or I'm just not going to do it. And I feel like, just, I feel like draw a line in the sand this morning. Just come up and just say, Jesus. Here I am. I can't speak. I'm young. I'm old. I'm dumb. I am whatever, whatever. But here I am. Here I am. Here I am. I feel like people are getting cold right now. Just fire, 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 fire right now in Jesus' name to burn up, just to set us on fire. The early church, when they were persecuted, they prayed for boldness. 
They prayed for freedom of fear. We just bind all fear. We just ask for boldness right now. Holy Spirit, we ask for your boldness. Father, for your heart. for young people for young people for just complete surrender your life is just going to be different you cannot make it you cannot make it life as usual your life is going to be on fire you're going to go to crazy places crazy places where normal people cannot go <laughs> Woo! but you will <laughs> Woo! Jesus thank you for this generation for this generation for this generation on fire that nothing is going to stop them. Nothing is going to stop them. Ah! The enemy has come to disqualify them, but nothing is going to stop them. Ah! They're going to be the wild ones. Jesus, some of you are saying, can, can God be trusted? Let me tell you, Gideon went and then he tested God. If you want to find out if he's trustworthy, you got to take a step of faith. You got to take that step over the snake line. You got to take that step out of fear. You got to make that bold, expensive statement. Lord God, I'm willing to find you to be better than I've known you to be. Man, oh Jesus. Lord, I just ask right now that your spirit would begin to come and you would seal the work that you are doing. Lord, I believe you're whispering on Gideons here today that you are showing them ways to test you and find you good as they have made that sacrifice, as they've come and they've laid down and they said, are you, if this is really you, I need this. I need the sign. I need the pre your presence. I need your healing. I need the peace of, from mental torment, the peace and the healing from physical torment. I need a sign. And he gave a sign so that they could empower obedience. So, Father, I ask that you would also begin to speak to every single person here about their steps of obedience in that surrender. Lord, we worship you. You are so good. I really feel like... Um... Just people all across the room I see in visions right now. I feel like he's showing pictures of, of people groups, of people that he's calling you to, that you're just seeing faces. You're seeing faces right now. <laughs> just press into it. That's Jesus. That's Jesus. He's given the supernatural love right now. He is just pulling us out of our own self-preservation, self-protection into more, into more, into calls. He's um, given like faces of different nations, of different people groups, of just people groups even around here. Whew, he's calling right now. Just press in. Just do not. I feel like he's standing like a flame be before so many of our faces right now. And there is almost like this, this, 
knee-jerk reaction to pull back and be like, no, it's too much, it's too much, it's too much. But I feel like there's an invitation to lean in. Yes, some of us, it's our neighbors, our classmates. It, you know, it could be the people at the supermarket. I don't know what it is, but God, give me your heart of love for them. Maybe the first response is fear, but God, give me your heart of love. Oh God, I want to be that sold out lover of you. I want that. Man, I, I got to tell you, there was, um, when, part of the reason I knew about the pain was I suddenly had a spasm on the right side of my back. I don't have spasms. That's not my thing. I don't have a spasm anymore. As I called that out, let me tell you, his healing is here. Move your back, move your body, check your mind. God has been healing you, touching you. Maybe it's only halfway, lean in for the more. Celebrate the small beginning. Maybe it's a quarter of the way. Celebrate the small beginning. Say, God, I know this is a sign of who you are to me. I want the fullness. I need the fullness. That's what you paid for. Ooh, Jesus, I just release your peace upon this house. Peace that passes understanding peace that allows us to make crazy audacious declarations of surrender and lord we're trusting that you are faithful to keep that which we've surrendered that which we've committed lord that you are able to come bring to completion that which you've begun holy spirit i just ask you just to come and just fill up every place that's been emptied every place that's been emptied in our hearts every demon that's left left a place right now (laughs) that we ask in holy spirit that you just come and just uh take up take up fill up that place put oil in there (laughs) put your just let your presence flow through those places that have been um taken up by the enemy thank you jesus that you are just coming and filling up that place that you are coming and filling up that space that we have surrendered that your fire is falling on sacrifice that as we go out of here today we are go as people set on fire the word i got um for this year was an open heart set on fire open heart set on fire not lukewarm not lukewarm not halfway not 90 percent 100 percent burning for you jesus open open poured out self-sacrificial love other other focused love poured out poured out poured out lord we give you 2024 you paid for it lord let us be your faithful burning ones Set us aflame. Send us out into the harvest fields. We worship you, Lord. We give you ourselves. We give you our families. We give you this body. We give you our lives. In your beautiful name. Amen. Amen. For more information, go to AriseLife.org or follow us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram.